What up, Boxing World 12 Rounds TV? I'm back. This video is about my first look of Sergey Kovalev versus his uh, upcoming opponent, opponent uh, this Saturday, 25th, I believe. 25th of July. Man, I can't pronounce this. Najib Muhammadi. There you go. It's going to be Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, Las Vegas. This one, uh, Kovalev is going to be the defending WBA Super IBF and WBO Light Heavyweight titles. All right. Now, Kovalev currently undefeated at 27 and 0. 24 knockouts, only three decisions. No defeats, like I said, undefeated, only one draw. Last fight that um, Kovalev was in was with Jean Pascal. That was a TKO in the eighth round, and that was in Quebec. That was March. Man, Kovalev's been busy. I might have even missed that one. Because from a... I did miss that one. See, man, I, I'm, I'm been very busy with my real job, with YouTube, with fishing and all that stupid stuff. I miss all this stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, for, from what I thought, I mean, the last one Kovalev fought was Bernard Hopkins, which made a video. Of. Um, but anyway, I guess that's not, uh, that's not the case here. So yeah, he did fight in Quebec, and that was with Jean Pascal, which he knocked him out, TKO'd, and on the twelve, uh, no, on the eighth round, and um, yeah, that was March of two thousand, um, March two thousand fifteen. Anyhow, this is my first look. Like I said, let's look at um, Najib Muhammadi's record. All right, this guy's obviously gonna be a He's rated at the light heavyweight, just like Kovalev is. He's from France. Um, he's orthodox. So both fighters going to be orthodox. So no disadvantage, no advantage there. Same, same. This guy has more fights than Kovalev. Looks like he's much of a veteran than Kovalev. He's got a total of 40 fights. 37 wins. He's got 20 sous. Ah, 20 sous. Oh my god, dude. I'm all tired today. I went fishing. Sorry. Uh, actually, I slept all afternoon, so I'm very tired. Anyways, you know when you sleep so long, when you wake up, you're still tired. That's how I feel right now. Plus, I had some damn noodles. So, anyways, Najib Mohammadi has a total of 40 fights. Like I said, he's got 37 wins. 22 of them is coming off by knockout only has three losses in his resume no draws so there you go he's 37 and three with 22 ko's um not much is said here besides muhammadi turned professional in 2005 became the france light heavyweight champion in 2008 however he lost the title a year later in 2009 in an early tko defeat by Fieri Carl in the first round. So he, he was knocked out by this guy Carl. Mohamedi would bounce back from his defeat against Carl and become light heavyweight champion of France again in 2013. After defeating Patrick Boy via unanimous decision. It says Mohamedi garnered a lot of attention to him in 2014 after defeating Anatoly Dudchenko. In the seventh round, TKO. I'm sorry, guys. You, you're going to have to excuse me for mispronouncing some of these names. Hell, I can't even pronounce English words properly. Hell, what, what better than these words? In the seventh round, TKO victory, which moved him into position to challenge Bernard Hopkins for the IBF light heavyweight title. Mohamedi went on to face, went on to face Demetrius Walker on the undercard of the Kovalev versus Hopkins bout and won via KO. Victory in the first round. He announced a deal with Boxing Promotion Company main events less than a week after his defeat of Walker. He currently trained, oh, with Abel Sanchez. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Well, they didn't know who Najib Mohammed is until 
today, basically. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Abel Sanchez, Triple G Golovkin's trainer. Um, good trainer. Uh, one of the best out there. So he should be, he should be, uh, you know, right on track. Um, as his uh, current trainer is also, is also um, training one of the undefeated guys in the sport, which is, like I said, Triple G Golovkin. Uh, he's 30 years old, and there it is. 40 fights, 37 wins, 22 KOs, only three losses. I don't like that first knockout, though. He 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 lost once before on the first uh, on the first round, and not only yeah, he's, he's a KO. So I don't, I don't like that. I don't trust that. I gotta watch that. My time later on. I don't. I gotta watch that. What the heck happened? I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't. Sometimes you know whatever happens in the past. It's past. Past is past. Present is present. Future is future. I get that. Get it. Got it. But I don't like that first round, though. You know, you, you lost before in the first round or get knocked out, knocked out in the first round. I don't like that. Not one bit. Anyway, so yeah, there you go, guys. This is my first look of Kovalev versus Mohamedi. Uh, it's going to be on the 25th of July, this upcoming Saturday. Obviously, the weigh is going to be Friday. That's the same time frame, if not... No, I was thinking of uh, Garcia and gay-ass Pauli Malinaji. But that's not until 1st of August. Anyways, okay, so that's the one to look for this upcoming Saturday. And I will be doing my, um, my prediction of the fight uh, later on this week. And... Um, my review of the weigh-in and obviously the uh, post-fight review Saturday. So there you go, guys. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about background. So <clears throat> Kovalev, as I mentioned, 27, 24 KOs, no defeats, one draw. Mohamedi, 40 wins. I mean, uh, 40 fights, what, 37 wins, something like that. Um, three losses. 22 KOs. Same basically age, you know what I mean? Mohamedi is 30 years old, Kovalev is 32. Both fighters are orthodox. One's born raised born in France, one is in Russia. Um, how about height? Let's see. Uh, Kovalev is six foot. And Najib Mohamedi is 5'11. Uh, not much there. So we pretty much even Steven here. Right? Pretty even Steven. Just one fighter. Najib Mohamed is a little bit more fights. A little bit more of a veteran. Compared to. Uh, to. Uh, Sergey. Sergey. Kovalev. That dude is dangerous. You know I mean. You guys seen his fight. But I was really surprised how he fought um, Bernard Hopkins, man. Bernard Hopkins is 50 some years old. He didn't knock him out. You've seen Kovalev knocked out a lot of big heavy fighters before. You know what I mean? Big solid dudes. He knocked him out. Knock him down. At least. Bernard Hopkins is in the game for so long for a reason. I mean, yeah, obviously. Bernard Hopkins didn't throw didn't throw as many punches as a lot of people expected. How could he, man? That's dangerous. Might get counterpunched, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get a counterpunch from a 32-year-old guy, knockout artist, and you're 50-some-year-old. That knockout could affect you for the rest of your life when in that age. But, hey, Bernard Hopkins is in good shape, though. You know, you guys seen the... The so-called all-access Hopkins, the alien versus Kovalev. Uh, the doctor said that Hopkins' body, I mean, Hopkins' uh, health is compared to, what, a 24, 25-year-old. So he's in good shape for um, for his age. He takes care of his, his body and, um, you know, and yeah, his, his, his health and body appreciates that, taking care of his, his own. Um, but um, I, I believe... Uh, but Hopkins should be fighting another one, right, before uh, retiring, a, a, another fight or two, to kind of like seal the deal, even though I think he shouldn't fight no more. I think I made a video for that. Um, shouldn't fight no more, man. Retired, he's going to be a Hall of Famer regardless. But he wants to kind of like, you know, go out with a bang. So he wants to win 
not only with some random fighter, like some people we know, trying to get out or trying to go out, off out the game, fighting bums. And you guys know what I'm talking about. So, um, but yeah, uh, Bernard Hopkins up to fight a somehow, somehow uh, a solid fighter and win that fight, and then and goes he retired. So let me know what you guys think. That would be Sir J. Is it Sir Gay or Sir J? I can't. I don't know. Sir, we'll just put Sir J. Sir J. Kovalev versus Najib Mohammedi, July twenty fifth, this upcoming Saturday. You guys stay tuned. Please subscribe to my channel for I will be doing like I said my boxing prediction, my fight prediction of the uh, of this fight, and uh, my review of the weigh-in as I always do. Um, in the post fight. That's what I do. If you guys are not um, familiar yet with what I do or familiar yet with my channel, what I do is, you know, interesting fights and stuff like that. If I don't miss it, because like I said, I, I, I'm very busy doing this other dumb stuff. So, if I'm not busy and like I said, I mean, if it's big fights and no names, obviously I'm not going to miss that. Um, but what I do is usually, you know, look at the first look. If you guys look at my videos, you guys can see. Uh, if there's, uh, if it's a, such a big fight, um, known fighters are fighting, then they will obviously do a 24-7 on all access, you know, in that kind of stuff. Then I will do a review of that also. But if it's, you know, um, a good solid fight, but not necessarily a big pay-per-view sensation where Showtime or HBO is not involved, then there ain't going to be no 24-7 all access and all that stuff. Um, but I usually do my first look. Uh, my boxing prediction, my fight prediction of the, of the fight, and then my uh, weigh-in uh, review, and obviously my post-fight review. And there, if there's um, press conferences, I do reviews of that also. So you guys, like I said, if you guys have subscribed to my channel, please do. Please thumbs up, like, share, and and and, um, and um, subscribe to, to this channel. And then um, stay tuned for more boxing. I'll talk to you guys on the, on the next one. And you guys take care. Peace.